everyone, welcome to another episode of Ask Diabla Shade with your host, Diabla Shade, LCSW, and I'm back with a new episode. If you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Diabla. Um, I am a licensed clinical social worker as well as a psychotherapist. My channel is all about things mental health, where mental health meets the millennial. So I like to bring content just based off what, you know, us millennials experience um, in, regarding mental health, but also relationships, you name it, I like to discuss it. Which brings me my, to my topic today, which is dedicated to business and relationships. And the title of this video is gonna be, why marriage is going to be either the best or worst business decision you will make in your life. Now, sometimes you might look at me and say, she looks so young, like what could she possibly tell me about marriage? Well, if again, you're new to my channel, I have been married before, I am happily divorced. If you have not seen my three-part marriage and divorce series, it's on my page, just go ahead, watch it, pop some popcorn. But yes, I want to just give my take on why I feel like marriage is the best business or worst business decision you will ever make. I know when we think about marriage, we think that everything is all love, like everything is love, Beyonce and Jay-Z and all that, you know. But as much as love is definitely a part of marriage, it is a very, very small part of it. When I mean by that, of course we get married because we love the person. Well, I would hope so, that you, you love the person that you are marrying. God has brought you guys together. God is the center of your marriage. And you know, the three strands, you know, that you cannot be easily broken. I think a lot of people fall in love with potential over credentials. When you get married, everything is all cute at the beginning, but I think people neglect to see what happens. Say if your spouse loses a job or, you know, if you were to get in a car accident and you can't work, financial things will start to, financial issues would begin to occur. And you don't really know someone, one, until you marry them, two, until you live with them. And you need to know, what am I getting myself into? Now, of course, two incomes look great, right? Past that, when I was married, there was a stint in which my ex-husband had lost his job. I had to be able to pay the bills when he didn't have a job. Okay, here I am, young, 19, 20 years old, paying all the bills for a, you know, a small moment in time. Uh, imagine if I didn't work a good job or, you know, he wasn't educated enough to get a good job. Where, where would we have been? You know, well, probably homeless, um, probably uh, worried about how we're going to eat. Some people get married to people that financially cannot aid them in growing. And that's really why I want to do this topic. Sometimes we marry people with some because we'll make cute babies. You know, some people out there doing that or just because we look cute on Facebook, but can this person take care of you? And I know this is about to go into a whole little um, debate on, wow, men, women just marry us because of our money. Uh, No, we want to marry you because you're a provider. Like love is cute and all, but can you provide for me? You know, what are you ambitious? Like me, if when I get married again, my husband has to be ambitious. He has to be a, a hustler by nature because I want to make sure that if I lose my job or somewhere to happen, you can still take care of us. You can take a dollar and make it 10, you know? And I think some, a lot of what's going on now, women, we're very independent. Like we're super independent and we we are hustlers by nature. We're built to be hustlers. Like we're groomed to be hustlers. We go to school while doing a side business, while um up here <laughs> working like three jobs. And we want the same for our men. And I think there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with saying that I need my man to be able to make just as much as me or more than me. And I think a lot of people get caught in that. And it's not because it's a fad and it's a social media thing like, oh my God, we gonna go half on rent. No, if whatever you wanna do in your household, that is completely fine. You like it, I love it. But personally for me, like I said, I need someone that is going to provide. Provided means, like I said, you're able to put a roof over our heads, whether I have a job or not. You're able to put food on the table. You're able to 
put the lights on everything that I can do. I would never ask a man to do anything that I cannot also provide, you know, that I can also do. So if I'm making this certain amount of money, of course, if we're living a certain lifestyle, if I were to lose my job, we still need to be able to pay the bills. So we need to be equally yoked when it comes to the finances. Because if either one of us lose our job, who's going to pay? I need to be able to pay the bills by myself if you lose your job, you know? So my thing is when you're thinking about marriage, Think about that you love them. Think about that they love God, but also think about are they cool with just staying in the same job for the next 20 years and making minimum wage or whatever the case is. If they're cool with just staying in the same box and don't plan on growing, they're not good uh, with their money. Another thing, if they're not good with their money, you don't probably need to marry them because I'm sorry, if you're not good with your money, how I know you're going to, you, are you going to be good with my money? No. If you spend your money recklessly and you're not investing in anything and you your whole check is gone, you gonna spend my whole check too. So that's another reason why I think uh, it's the best it's the best or worst business decision you can make is picking the right spouse. It's a lot because I think we live in a society where people are so afraid that men are trying to take take advantage of women financially. Women are trying to take take you know men take advantage of men financially and it's just not true marriage is a business partnership and most people do not get that marriage is definitely a business partnership marriage can make your credit go up marriage, marriage can make your credit go down marriage, marriage can make you live in a nice house built up on the ground or it can have you living in section eight like marriage is business when you think about if you were to go into business with someone would you go into business with someone who did not manage their money well like would you start a business from the foundation up with someone that was reckless with money was not good at making financial decisions no you would not enter a business relationship with anyone that was not good with their money so why would you enter a marriage with with someone that wasn't good with their money that's my point you have to be equally yoked across the board so my advice to you here is when you're thinking about marriage, think about how they are with their money. Think about are they ambitious? Are they okay with growing? Are they a hustler? Are they, and hustler, not necessarily thinking about like selling something illegal. I think some people might get that. No, like able to survive. They're survivors. So they also are thinking about generational wealth. A lot in our generation, we don't think about generational wealth. We're just trying to make it to the next thing. We don't even have, a lot of people don't even have life insurance. Like, so you just going to just use GoFundMe forever to fund people life insurance? Like we, sometimes in our culture, we do not make the best business decisions. And we all have to do better women. If you out here buying Louis bags, but you ain't got life insurance on you, your parents, your kids, then some this way, you're not making good financial business decisions. And the men, you guys should not date women like that. If people, if you are not good with your money, just don't date each other. Just stay broke by yourself, okay? And I promise I'm not trying to be harsh, you guys. I'm just really just, I thought about this and I had a conversation with someone about this. And I'm like, when I got divorced, it was some financial things that I did not expect that affected my credit that I had to build it up. Now I'm almost at 800, but I had to rebuild my thing. A divorce is expensive. You know, when, like I said, when he lost his job, okay, that all came back on me. And had I, you know, married someone that was not good with his money and Sometimes he wasn't, wasn't good with his money. Then I could have been asked out, excuse my language, but that could have messed me up further more than it did. So be careful who you marry. Make sure they got goals. Make sure they're responsible. Make sure they know something about investing. If they don't teach them, they're willing to learn cool. Just don't be with anyone or marry someone that is reckless with money. I will give you that advice, but you know, y'all going to do what y'all want to do anyway. All right, everyone, that's all I have for you today. Again, this is just based off a conversation I had. I wasn't even planning on doing a video today, but I was like, why not? Um, You're here on my YouTube channel, so go ahead and subscribe for more videos. If you like videos about me just ranting about things like marriage, divorce, millennial stuff, relationship stuff, as well as mental health, please let me know in the comments below. You can follow me on Instagram, X Diablo Shade. Also, I'm the co-host to a podcast called Everyday We Lit, Living Your Truth. You can find it on Spotify, Google, and iTunes. You can follow our Facebook page, X Diablo Shade, and go to my blog, xdiabloshade.com, where you can buy items that are for the clinician and for the client. And also, I do blog posts here and there, you know, when I find time. 
All right, everyone, it was so good, you know, coming on camera today, and I can't wait to do this again. See you.